No, no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the Plant a Seed podcast. How's that for an intro? Uh, I'm joined this morning by Dan Regteen from Recon Ag. Uh, Dan, I love the little intro there, man. Why don't you give the listeners a sense of relatability? Tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Thanks, Jono. It's great to be here. Um, I, well, there's a lot to say. And I don't want to bore you too much. So a sense of relatability, I guess I um, am really, really passionate about regenerative agriculture. And I have been um, from way before I knew what it was. So um, anyway, I'll start with where I am. I'm in Palmerston North um, with my family. Uh, I've got two kids. Um, I have recently started a business, as you said, called Recon Ag. And that actually stands for reconciliation agriculture um, and reconnection agriculture, because really what I'm passionate about is regenerative agriculture, but more in particular, it's bringing people together and bringing the ideas of ecology and agriculture together with the places where people live and work and play. And, and as well, just reconnecting that work, living and playing as one thing um and i guess that's really where we connect you and i Jono, is um just those ideas of reconnection and um and loving what you do and being authentic so what more can i say at this point have you done some work this morning dan uh, no no i've been looking after the kids and it's been an early morning as it often is with a three-year-old and, and have you we, we know you've done some play. Uh, you know, we were just talking before about your G-string, uh, getting that one sorted. <laughs> yeah, I have to clean up my G-string. Yep, that's so, right. So there's a bit of, bit of play there. This is the G-string here. So. Yeah, don't be worried, folks. It's uh, For those of you that can't see, Dan is holding up a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, cool, Dan. So why don't you... What I was capturing there before was just uh, why I asked you if you've done some work is, you know, it's only 7.30 a.m. And most people would have only ever done work or getting to work by now. And, uh, you know, here we are leaving people to guess whether we are working or playing. And it is all just living. So um, and we'll talk a bit more about living as we get into the podcast. But um, why don't you go back a little bit, Dan? Tell us a little bit about uh you know give us a bit of a history history on dan can you hear me yep did you hear that last question there dan i did i just put my headset in so you cool. could hear me a little better i thought um the history well i um was brought up all around the place um around new zealand i had what I think of as a yo-yo childhood. I went up and down North Island, South Island. I went to 11 different schools and um, didn't really set any roots anywhere. And um, didn't come from any real connection with agriculture until leaving school. Uh, so I went to high school in Nelson, uh, left school, and then traveled up to Taranaki to um, find something to do in the outdoors, I enjoyed outdoors. And my father, who I hadn't had anything to do with until I was 18, um, was involved with a lot of dairy farms. He's an accountant. So I thought that's, a, that's this is an opportunity to um, go and see what farming's all about. So got a job on a dairy farm and um, hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I was authenticity, sort of... man. Back to authenticity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It was absolutely the deep end. It was a um, recent conversion, 600 cow split calving operation that was understaffed. And um, and I had no clue one end of a cow from the other. So I um, hated that. And then I started, but I thought, well, this is only one farm. I still, I still love animals. And, and I did really enjoy some aspects of it. I got on really well with the farm manager. So I applied for other jobs and two months later, got a job on a smaller farm, 250 cows in Okato, still in Taranaki, um, 
with the law or the shamoka called Warren Patterson. And he really introduced me to what farming, what farming is. And it's a lifestyle. It's um, about working with animals and working with nature. And, um, and I just loved that every minute of it. It was just a learning experience. And there was just so many different animals and different activities. Like he took me out hunting and, and we had heaps of fun and laughs. And, um, and then uh, after that, so we're talking 2007, um, the situation changed on the farm and I moved on to a bigger farm. It was 700 cows working for Fonterra. And that was an amazing, operation it was really well staffed really well set up um and i did that for a year um i won't go too much in detail i could keep going and it would be incredibly boring but anyway so i'm just giving you an introduction of i just fell in love with farming through warren's um got onto a bigger operation i really started to get the hang of things um but really found the more i learned because i was going through ag ito courses and things I was just so drawn to the science and the complexities of the just all of the moving parts in the system and um, then I and I was still so keen on the outdoors and and learning about different activities and having fun outside so I applied for a scholarship to go on Outward Bound and that was a real turning point that was just a massive shift in my um view of myself i suppose and it was a 21 day course in anakiwa marlborough sounds and we did all sorts of activities sailing rock climbing tramping um swimming running half marathon a whole bunch of stuff and um it really tested my boundaries and taught me a whole lot of things about myself that i didn't know as well as bringing together really cool people from different backgrounds, but um, this particular course was all about farmers um, on the scholarship. So that was a real turning point. And after that, I decided to apply to go to university, um, which I never thought I would do. And no one in my family had done that before. Um, so I applied for a Dairy NZ scholarship and went down to Lincoln and spent four years studying agricultural science with ecology is a massive side interest and um yeah so that's a pretty good background i think yeah yeah and and yeah so the dairy farm stuff you got a snapshot of what the industry was like you know the the some good some not so good and then what there's another little gap there that i'd like you to touch on and how about like your time as a land use manager and what that taught you? Yeah, well, there's, there's, there's another couple of chapters before that. And but don't, I'm before, not, yeah, and, yeah, and was, before you start, Dan, I don't want you feeling like you're boring because you're not. <laughs> and, and this podcast, there is no, this is the way it should look. This is just authentic sharing. So don't be worried about time. I'm not going to cut you off. Uh, although I do sometimes not intentionally, okay. um, yeah, but, thanks, but just, just share, man, just share what's there. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just jump to my time as a land management advisor for Horizons Regional Council. Um, that was after a really difficult time in my life where I had a wife, a house, a two-year-old daughter and my son on the way and I had hit a wall with where I was at which was um, through those four years of university I really had a goal to be a farm consultant and I set my sights on that and I worked for five years as a livestock improvement advisor for LIC uh, to get to reach that goal and I thought those were the stepping stones I was making I was getting a lot of interaction my job was being on farm talking to farmers every day about improvement so I thought that was a massive 
opportunity to get into what I really wanted to do, which was consultancy and really making some bigger changes, um, positive differences in, in people's lives. So, um, but I hit a brick wall, which was, I got my dream job, every opportunity in the world, and then it just, it just crumbled. Um, it's hard to sum up exactly why, but um, it had something to do with just the receptiveness of the industry, or this is where I'm going to frame it at the moment, the receptiveness of my environment for what I wanted to bring to it. Um, and it became impossible with the with the stepping stones that were in front of me that were laid out um, in this dream job that I had to do it the way that I felt I needed to, what I'd been building up through all those years, that um, it wasn't, wasn't possible to do it the way I imagined it. And so I hit a brick wall and I just, my body just said, no, no. So um, I, had, I just quit. And that was a crazy, crazy year. <laughs> Dude, you, one thing just on that, like massive ups to you, because, you know, a lot of people spend decades in that space, you know, knowing deep down that what they're doing doesn't align with their ethos or their, you know, expectations of life or intentions in life. But, or, and a lot of people won't, and I'm talking about myself here, um, you know, all my years as a spraying contractor, applying chemicals, it w I wouldn't allow my disagreement with what I was doing to surface because it was too uncomfortable. And so, you know, big ups to you, man, for doing it as quick as you did. Yeah, and it kind of coincided with, I, I think I would have stuck at it. I would have done something if it hadn't have been for having a young child at the time and another one on the way, because mm -hmm. that really did force me to go into the why like why am i doing this that's obviously for the kids um do i want them to see me do it this way that mm. i'm being offered or and um and i and it wasn't really a voluntary thing it was just a hitting a brick wall so and there's no way through this so um there's got to be other options and there was like at that time it was 2000 and oh, that was 2019. Um, I, I did have, have other options. I, I took a couple of months out and um, did some real introspection and some real healing from that, that whole idea that I'd built myself up to, right, I'm going to be a farm consultant. This is how it's going to look. It's going to be great. It's going to be me. And I had to rewrite that whole thing it's not going to work like that um and was lucky enough to get a job with the regional council here in horizons as a land management advisor which was a massive steep learning curve um i had no idea how regulation really works and uh, and how yeah it's just a cultural thing <clears throat> within councils that it's not really, there's not a lot of space for individuality and that simply just didn't work for me. Mm. Um, I guess for better or for worse, that's who I am is I've got to be, got to be an individual. And there was a lot of things that, <clears throat> excuse me, I had, I had a lot to offer but it wasn't being listened to and it wasn't actually, there wasn't the structure for any voice for, um, for someone in the position like I was in to make a difference, at least not very quickly. So, um, so I looked at other options and found through what I'd learnt at the council and, and through what I'd learnt previously there was a huge opportunity for someone with skills in mapping and farm planning to get out into business and start 
telling farmer stories and, and being the go between between farm management and council and regulators. And that was initially a massive reason why I had confidence to um, quit again. And well, I started my business kind of at the same same day that I quit officially. And uh, and I've, I've just been building it. So that was October last year. And I've just been working away at it and, and imagining how it could progress and doing lots of a huge variety of different work and just loving it. <laughs> it's got a long way to go and it's certainly not what you'd call a, a sustainable business at the moment it, by any means, but it's certainly sustainable in terms of just being, and being so fun and so many good connections and so much positive energy everywhere for the stuff that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's almost like, uh, you know, if we focus on my experiences is, is, is if you focus on like, uh, you know, financial income is the goal, uh, you know, often it's, it's like this never ending dangling carrot that you'll never actually reach. And, and it becomes a blur and you lose 10 years. That's what happened to me. And uh, the last, you know, five years of being in, you know, a world that I created, you know, like what you mentioned about how you recreated your, your, you know, intentions around what it looked like to become a farm advisor. Um, you just recreated that at some point. Well, I, I simply recreated my whole life and without the money as a focus point, you know, you, like you say, when you find something you're passionate about, uh, it's interesting. It's very uncomfortable because you don't know how it's going to look. And when you're doing something new and innovative, there's no manual, there's no, <laughs> there's lots of people around you that like to give advice, but really n n almost none of it's relevant. And so it's about making it work and, uh, and just sticking to your, you know, what you're passionate about. And what I found is the right, you know, the energy is there, the people come into your life, you know, like look at how you and I met just completely, you know, unpredictable and, then the right resources come in too, you know, it all just works out. And when you talked about being in that position where you had two year old daughter and a wee boy on the way, um, did you know you were having a boy or did you? Yeah. Yeah. So wee boy on the way that for me, when I was in that moment, actually ever having that situation of a young daughter at home and a, and a wee boy on the way, was actually what kept me in doing doing what I was doing because I was being told I was having it drilled into me that that was my contribution to my family was my income and you know never mind the dad's presence and purpose it's like uh, I'd come home the world of spraying contracting is pretty full on and uh, sure I put the money you know into the family and supported them financially. But, uh, you know, when you're selling out, when you're not doing what you know you should be doing, it's so inauthentic and it shows up. What showed up for me is like this really grumpy, arrogant, you know, so gone as in not present and in my head all the time that no amount of money was worth that, you know, mm. but, I, but I couldn't see it at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so yeah, we've got another thing in common yeah yeah let's talk a bit about what's happened um since we've met dan okay um does it feel like as lot has happened we've only been hanging out for a, a matter of weeks <laughs> you know what i mean yeah yeah uh, i do feel like i've known you for a lot longer though listening to your videos and watching your things on Facebook. Um, We're just on that, man. You don't do much of that. And I feel the same way because you know why? 
because you don't hold back with your sharing. Mm. I actually know you because you created yourself for me through our conversations. None of this, hey man, how's, how's your day? You know, how have you been? You know, none of that small talk. Mm. That's what, that's what thought, to, that's what had me think when we met, I thought, there's something here, you know, a bit like on the diagram that we had drawn out, there's something here that we need to explore. Mm. Yeah, so I guess we had an interaction when I was working at the council. Um, I sort of asked if, if we could have a call and, and talk. Um, and so we briefly kind of talked. And then, then we just kind of interacted a little bit over social media and it was really only, was it just the Blue Green Conference? Yeah. Which was yeah. only February. And I have to say, man, when you when you called me up uh, as the man at the council, I, I already had a listening of you like rolling my eyes, like, uh, <sighs> council, you know? <laughs> Did you tell? Oh, I, I don't know. It was still you. It was still me? Okay. Yeah, but I guess at that point, like, it was just our first interaction. Yeah. Um, it was, oh, I just want to mention the conversation that you had with Jacob Heron. Um, was it the big conversations in Little Caravans? That's the one. Yeah, that was amazing. Uh, that really was huge um, for me trusting you, I suppose. And just realizing what you're all about and it wasn't just wasn't just surface level stuff like you were very authentic and how you conducted what you did um and then i went on to read the book that jake recommended in that in that um conversation and which was the surrender experiment by michael singer and yeah that was just so ground shaking um and really to me it's all about trust and so that links up with i just thought well this guy Jono, he's one to watch he he lives in in trust and um and he's trustworthy so i just wanted to keep talking to you and then so we had another chat once i left the council job just to catch up about recon ag and what it is yeah, because at the time, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. When I when I said to you, I had a listening of you of like, oh, cancel. That was before we had the call. That was mm. going into the call, and then we had the call, and you communicated about you wanted to go out. And I remember giving you a very firm kick in the ass, like, <laughs> we need more people. Go. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't. <laughs> but it was <laughs> at that point I didn't, um, and and then I. I saw that you were doing a fast for seven days, was it? I only made four, but I yeah. wanted to do seven. And I just, I was, I was looking forward to those updates every day. I was like, wow, this guy's crazy. <laughs> but we'll, we'll see what comes out of it because whatever he's doing, he's doing it with trust and authenticity. And um, something pretty amazing is going to come out of it one, one way or another. And um, I can't remember the, the exactly how it went, but just having a few messages with you when you were doing that fast and at the end of it, it just that was the kick that I needed. And I can't put my finger on what it was, but it was just like, it's time to do your thing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow, man. It's that fresh, huh? Yeah. Yep. Very fresh. And then, so I, I went out on my own into business, into the world of the unknown. And the void. Yeah, into the void. And um, it's, it's a really cool feeling. But um, then fast forward to February when we, oh, or before February, when we had a conversation about how things are going in new business and, and things and started really connecting a bit more. Then you mentioned that you're just, you, oh, you're going to come up to the North Island 
soonish. He's got this blue green forum, which is the National Party Environmental Forum. And um, it's in Masterton. And I said, right, I'm, I'm going to be there. <laughs> and there you were. Yep. So then we, we got to catch up in, in real life, even though we had met in person on your, your tour, which was amazing as well. Your, um, your regenerative agriculture speaking tour. RA20. Yeah, RA20. Um, we, we managed to talk quite a bit in person mm -hmm. and then um, had breakfast the next day. And then, yeah, we just kind of decided to do something a bit more spend more energy on this, whatever this sort of energy we've, we've got between us. And then, so we had some more conversations and we launched very quickly after that Living Systems, which is a, a platform, an online platform built on mighty networks that is about connecting people around the subjects of regenerative food production but not limited to that mm. which is why it's called living systems mm. it's about living and just the systems that we participate in mm. which happens to be a lot to do with food um, mm. and regeneration is just so vital in this time for uh, for lots of reasons it's yeah, do you want to talk about regeneration as a kind of concept? Yeah, man. Well, I'd love you to, but I just want to just chuck something in there, just sandwich something in there quickly. And that's, um, you know, during this conversation so far, we've talked a little bit about agriculture and a lot about living and ways of being. And with living systems, uh, what, we, what we realized was, and certainly something that I've been present to for a long time now, is a bit like what I said before about if the focus is on uh, something, we miss the the broader picture. You know, it becomes narrow minded. You 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 become sight set on something uh, without really having the foundation of the you know, like you said before, like the why. And so, living systems for me, you know, because I'd I'd already founded quorum sense and that has very quickly become new zealand's regenerative agriculture network <clears throat> and uh what i what i noticed was um i'd become quite <clears throat> interested in the philosophies around the for instance the community behavior the you know relationship aspect the 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 interactions off farm um, uh, and conversations behind the scenes. It all paints a large picture and it is all very important. Um, even when we're talking about just land regeneration or regenerative agriculture, this, all this other stuff goes on, you know, like the old saying, if you want to make small changes, change the way you do things. If you want to make big changes, change the way you see things. And I wanted to really be able to capture that uh, and I could only share so much, you know, like that was my access to uh, making a difference in the world of getting people to really think about why they are doing what they're doing. And then I met you and you had a very similar way of thinking. And I thought I was just the weird one, you know, who would go, I was always quite a deep thinker and a broad thinker even though I didn't used to always allow myself to communicate and express that thinking, I always did think it. I used to suppress it with drugs actually, because I didn't like the uncomfortableness of thinking big. Um, and so I used to just smoke weed at night just to silence that and, uh, and get myself off to sleep. But um, when I heard you sharing and talking a bit about your why and what you're passionate about, when we started talking about, you know, how we could link together in business with you and your, um, you know, skills around mapping and uh, farm planning. That's an area that I hadn't been, you know, that focused on or interested in, but I could see it working really well with my consultancy business. So 
that was the start. And then all of a sudden we got talking about all these big picture things. You know, we started having regular chats, you and I. Um, and most of the time those chats were about living and life. And then we thought, well, let's have, you were really clear that you were committed to bringing people together. And, uh, and I just literally just communicated with the, the quorum sense board that I intended to step down from the board and allow for some diversification. I felt like it was that time to, you know, watch that baby fly, uh, so to speak. And so I had, I had some, something there, like a, like a, like a want I didn't know I wanted. And when you started communicating about uh, this mighty networks, it was like, holy moly, you mean we can have this platform and it's free of ads and it doesn't have algorithms and uh, we can have people uh, sharing topics that are then categorized and we can refer back to them in their own category. And, and it was just like, whoa, this is like a dream, you know, like I'd heard uh on a previous podcast with john kemp on the plant of seed podcast where he mentioned about the new uh it was called kind harvest uh thing it sounded like really similar to that Ooh. and so we came up with a name living systems it just fitted didn't it yeah and we had no idea that that was going to happen we actually started to talk about a soil mapping system, a bit of a collaboration uh, to do with my mapping software and, and your knowledge around soil health. And, um, and we were just going to build a bit of a tool to help farmers assess soil health and do some reporting through maps. Uh, but it really grew. Maybe that's just what happens when we talk, John, is would just expand yeah <laughs> and incorporate so much more and then we saw that there was a big need for something like living systems just to have the the horsepower or the capacity to enable really good connections without some of those distractions of ads and and um different limitations of other ways of communicating censorship yeah so, um, so we built that first, and now we've uh, we've very we're very close to having um, what's expanded into land health mapping, which is a set of tools, including an app, which allows farmers to map their own properties, and using uh, soil health metrics, very simply plotted on the map um, and, and you can draw all sorts of different shapes and and color coding and it's it's designed to be a very very free canvas where you can see the aerial images of the farm and you can construct the tool that you want um, but a big part of it is the land health mapping attributes which we're, we're we've designed to be really easy to do, cheap, quick, and really it's all about the farmers doing it themselves and having that experience of, of the soil and knowing what healthy looks like, smells like, feels like. And um, so that's, that's really exciting for me. That's one of the things that I'm just so so thrilled about that I can be involved with with my business is helping to assist farmers to experience land health. Yeah, mm. it's another layer of connection mm. in an area where there is massive disconnect. In this day and age of you know technology that you know drones doing a lot of work for us. You know, we're farming off spreadsheets a lot of the time. Uh, everything's so data driven, we've forgotten the basics. Mm. And not through not through choice, I believe. I don't think it's through choice. It's every farmer wants the best for his farm and the best for his business. And when all that's advertised is all of these extras and all of these uh, technologies to increase efficiency and and decrease 
workload mm. is I don't blame anyone. For, I, I farm that way for 15 years. And when you get down to it and get reconnected to your soil and reconnected to your farm as an ecosystem, all of the complication disappears and it allows for complexity. You know, we talked about that distinction. And all of a sudden, everything is rather simple. You know, yeah. this paddock's not been working for 20 years. Let's use the land health um, system and, and, and let's dig a hole and let's explore. Very, very quickly, you can discover, wow, this hasn't been a fertility thing. This hasn't been, you know, it's, it's, it's a lack of ecological function. Mm. Yeah, and the yeah, ecological function is something that underpins farming so, so intricately, but is has been so ignored. Yeah, ecological like... function. It's not. It's not something on the side on the riparian margin that happens there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's happening. It, it's vital yeah. to the whole farm system, and it's just not appreciated. It's, but now it is. Now it's starting to come back and being appreciated more. And um, and it, it actually doesn't take that long to grow once you start focusing on it and once you start really understanding it and and nurturing the microbial communities in the soil because they're the ones that do the work. Mm. Yeah. And there's lots of diversity down there. You know, you yeah. talked about how a lot of, you know, high up industry leaders don't allow for a lot of diversity. It's, you know, no wonder we, we've got what we've got. You know, nature is massively diverse. And um, when we allow that on not just a micro organism level, but a macro and human, you know, wider ecosystem level it's pretty powerful yeah yeah and um i'm definitely not attached to the term regenerative agriculture because i didn't know it existed when i started having this idea of how i wanted to be a consultant throughout university and i said i did a a big side part of my degree was in ecology so I went right through, I did about five courses and went to advanced ecology. And I did Professor Steve Bratton's first agroecology course at Lincoln in 2010. And those two advanced courses in third year were, were another pivotal moment in my life where I really felt like I was beginning to understand ecology and economics and comparing and contrasting the two. And the way I think about it is ecology, it literally means the study of the household. Ecos is Greek for household and the wider sense of the places that you live, work and play is the ecos. And ology is the study of, so it's Ecology is the study of the household, whereas economics still has that household, but nomics refers to counting and naming and managing. So it's, it's managing of the household is economics and studying the household is ecology. So to me, this is perfect. This is like a balanced thing. Um, Ecology is listening. It's learning and understanding and studying what your household, what your environment is. And economics is talking. It's managing that environment and that situation, that household. They're both vital, but you've got to be listening and talking. You can't be just talking and shutting your ears off. So that was a pivotal moment. And I was like, wow, we just need to reconnect the two. And um, and that will be just so many so many win wins in agriculture and, and specifically 
but food production and and just how we get on in New Zealand, you know, mm. listening and talking. Yeah. Took me 28 years to learn how to listen. <laughs> yeah, my ex my ex partner used to say to me, John, you never listen. For 10 years she said that. And uh, one day I one day I really got that uh, yeah, I wasn't listening. <laughs> I was too wrapped up and waiting for my opportunity to speak <laughs> you know, and defend mm. and justify and mm. it really strikes me what you said then that distinction between economics and ecology i was doing not much of the ecology and i was doing lots of the economics mm. lots of talking yeah so um i did quite a few papers and um and essays and things around that subject of how do we reconnect ecology with economics but i didn't really have much experience so i didn't really have enough understanding to talk about it to the way i can kind of talk about it now um but really i got introduced to a lot of lines of thought and a lot of lines of study that have been so vital to what I'm doing at the moment and how I'm building my business and the different services I'm looking to provide and the potential for living systems and the mapping and everything. It's all built on these ideas of listening and talking a bit and, and listening and then talking a bit more. It's definitely not about talking and it's not just about listening. It's about both. and. Um, yeah, there's, there's a concept in ecology about paradigm. And it's, and it's, I learned it in regard to microbes and bacteria and how they, how they sort of go extinct or reintroduce into a new environment and how they interact with each other. And so when you sort of talk about quorum sense and what that means and and microbes that really resonated with that study that I had. And then you talk about paradigm shifts and it's all like connecting the dots <laughs> from very different places, but um, it makes a lot of sense. It, the paradigm idea is the way that a community is structured determines how it will continue and it takes it takes an event, it can be a bigger or a small event, but it takes event, an event to happen for a threshold to be reached. And then it can, it can flip into a new paradigm. So there's a, a certain community that has some cohesion, it has some, uh, what's the word, resilience. So it sort of stays a, a type of community structure and then something happens, a big or small event, and it could have been caused from within the community or outside um, to just change enough of the conditions to flip a switch and then nothing holds together. It just, it just falls apart. And um, that's quite a scary idea, but it happens on lots of different scales. It's not a, I'm not talking big scale, everything collapsing and then rebuilding. Um, like that was obviously a very, very small scale bacteria community, but something happened and it fell apart and rebuilt in a different structure with different species in that community. But then obviously that can happen in a farm ecosystem. If it doesn't get what, it, what it's sort of been built to require, mm. such as chemical inputs that hold it together, if, if one of those just becomes unavailable or um, too expensive or for some reason it stops being added, the whole thing could flip to a different paradigm because the that, that old one doesn't hold together without superphosphate, for instance. Mm. And the same with additions. Additions of something new, something, you know. Mm. Yeah, something new coming into the mix and just changing the whole dynamics of how that community interacts 
And yeah, I part of Bruno was a consultant and really trying to understand the whole system. So there was a lot of talk about systems thinking and whole farm systems. And when I when I was like, okay, that's me, that makes sense. I can think about the whole system. But all I was seeing was um, you know, productive pasture plants, animals, people, and machinery, and then chemicals. That that's the system. And there's something missing there. That's that's crucial to that system that we're not talking about. Um yeah, I'm not sure where I was going exactly with that. No, it's a it's a different perspective. It's like going from treating symptoms to addressing root causes. Hmm. What was missing was the view of the system. Yeah, and it's it's really hard to see microbes. So it's hard to appreciate that they are actually doing all the work on the farm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I spent 15 years farming without a clue of what a microorganism was. You know about them when one goes virulent and starts producing sicknesses and and diseases and problems and in organisms, you know about that. Yeah, and, and I have the chemical treatment to kill it. Mm. <laughs> that was it. That was it. I got the antibiotics. I got the cleansing agent. Give me the chemical. It's crazy. So this is the opportunity we have. We've got living systems. It's a it's a really powerful platform of community. Why don't you talk a bit about the branches, Dan? Okay. Branches is what we're calling groups because we really like this idea of a natural community and a mycorrhizal fungi community is a good metaphor for the connections that can occur between um, a network and plant roots. So branches is kind of like off a main stem, there's a branch that has a common interest and, and has a big set of common sort of narratives that they talk to and talk about and, and want to learn about. And so within living networks as a platform, the branches are groups where individuals can sign up to and receive whatever content gets posted up under that branch. So an example is book reviews, or what am I calling it, book club. Mm. So that's a branch um, if you're interested in books, particularly regenerative agriculture and ecology books, you can join that branch. There's a professionals branch where Professionals who are supporting farmers in particular can join and talk about different um, ways to work together to provide better services. Um, and, and also, importantly, there's the local branches. And that was a big part of the vision for me was providing something that can actually bring closer to home. So you've got this wide living systems network but then bringing it closer to home, you've got your kind of mini living systems network of people who are working and living and playing and farming close by you. And you can make a branch just for you and define the boundaries or not define them just, mm. um, and you can make it private. So no one else can see what you're doing or you can make it open if you wish. So people who are in that community haven't joined the, the branch can still see what you're doing before they decide to branch to join up. And how yeah. powerful is that man with regards to uh, perhaps urban folk don't have any land, but are really interested because the more I listen, the more conversations I have, the more I realize that there is so much interest in the urban communities about you know, the way their food is produced. This is mm. something that can bring the farming community and the urban community together such that there's no divide anymore. There's no division. People get to communicate what they want and farmers get to listen and respond. Yeah. 
and it's a grassroots thing. So there's no big corporation that is controlling it and there's no rules as to how you must conduct yourself. There's a bit of a culture around you know, respecting, mm. but there's no rules. And I think that's really quite cool for building a diverse community mm. because any rule that you make is going to alienate one group or another yeah to an extent and and so having branches where you can develop your own sort of culture around what sort of thing to share and 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 part of it can be about food production and the thing that we all have in common is we eat food so what I'm picking is that people are going to be quite interested in the farmers who are sharing within their local branch, what they're producing. And, um, and yeah, it's amazing just how much interest there is in the urban community around local food production and healthy food production and more environmentally aware food production. It's such a big, um topic of interest but there isn't at the moment there isn't that ability to access very much of that most mm. of the food needs are supermarket mm. yeah and and you know utilizing the events um portion of the of the platform of the mm. living systems platform farmers and and any communities can create, for instance, field days and and advertise them on the Living Systems Community, uh, you know, events notice board or events um, feature, such that you know not only do people off or out of farming communities, perhaps in the in the cities, uh, not only do they learn a bit about what farmers are up to through their sharing. But also get an opportunity to go out and see it for themselves, touch mm. it, feel it, you know, get down, dig a hole or two, have that connection themselves that we talk about that the farmers are getting. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the potential is there. We've got the horsepower. Yeah. We've got the capacity set up, but it's de definitely not about you and I having any sort of agenda around it. Um, <clears throat> we've just put it out there because we saw a need and we we've heard a need so mm. um what will be will be of it and it's got enough um customized customization to be able to change as well over time as needs change mm. it can change with it and the branches can develop and grow and and shrink and and all sorts changing paradigms within the network itself and also dan you know another cool feature about the platform is the ability for us to offer courses you know and and for dan and i folks we we are really clear as you can hear in dan sharing that we don't pretend to know what's best for any group or community uh the top down thing doesn't work we have no interest in that uh and dan and i together have a very unique skill set and perspective and the more conversations we have, the more we realize that there is plenty here to offer. And so if there's anything uh, for those of you that are listening that you would like to learn from Dan and I, uh, we're really interested right now in hearing from the communities what is wanted so we can provide it in the form of uh, various courses that we have the ability to, to create um, with different modules, different levels of you know understanding or, or skill um we can go as deep as you like uh you know we can really have it be something in its introductory um that's something i'm really looking forward to creating it's been a dream of mine to be able to you know have a piece online that people can you know learn at their own pace and in their own time mm. And what that looks like, man, I mean, like you, I'm sure you'll agree, we just have no attachment to. Mm -hmm. We've got some ideas. We're going to be putting some stuff out there very soon, so keep an eye out. 
Um, what about those that actually, this is the first time they've heard of Living Systems. Dan, what do we say to those guys? How do they, how do they get a taste? Go to www.livingsystems.nz um, and you'll just be taken to a landing page. There's a couple of questions to answer and then you'll be let in. So um, just have a look around. There's, <laughs> there's a few welcome articles to sort of try to orientate what's what and where's where. Um, but yeah, it's just a matter of going into it. It's a, it's a different sort of space, different to, I guess it's similar in some ways to things like Facebook. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just so much cleaner in terms of no ads or algorithms or, um, and it's, it's much, yeah, it's different. It's really different. Mm. It's much more sort of homely, I feel, because it's customized, it's living systems and it's branches and, and, you know, it's, it feels like our place, mm. it's not Facebook. It's not an international network. Although it's built on Nike networks, it's so customizable that it feels really homely. Mm. And for those of you that know me, uh, I, I love social media. I, you know, you talk to my daughter, oh, dad's always on his phone. And, you know, there's some truth to that. And most of the time, it's just pointless scrolling. And so I, I would like to get it to the point, I mean, this is what I see, is that I won't need Facebook anymore for me to have my contribution that I, you know, that I know that I, that I am committed to giving, you know, that, that contribution on a level of community, the way that I share myself, you know, I'm, I'm discovering the more I'm learning about living systems and that, that network, that platform, because Dan's been the, the, the mastermind behind the, creating and the setting up and doing all the you know behind the scenes stuff that's just so far out of my you know skill set but the way that he's done it and the way that it is is just for me who's not technologically savvy man it's really easy to operate isn't it? it's really simple just flows really well you get notifications if you want them you don't need them there's direct messaging there's that's it's pretty exciting, man, I must say. And the thought of being able to provide courses for people all over the world. Yeah, it's so exciting. There's so much potential. It's, a, it's an exciting place to be and um, also without any attachment to it. So there's, <laughs> there's just uh, this sense of watching and waiting, watching and just doing, being, and trying to, at the same time, have visions of what it might be, but not being attached to those visions. If yeah. they don't happen, then, um, then well, the whole point of it was to provide something useful. So if it's not useful, it's not useful. Yeah. And if we create it to what we think it should look like, do we learn? No. Mm. So it's, it's speculation, constant speculation with uh a lot of trust mm. yeah that's really key that word trust mm. um, and uh, there just needs a bit a little bit more trust and i guess that's another thing with, with living systems is i really wanted to see or to provide i felt the need to provide a safe place a, a more safe community that wasn't being constantly um, analyzed by algorithms and and bots to try and manipulate your own sharing and it, it, it didn't take ownership of your content either um, that to me is important for me trusting it but also um, just the having a little bit of a more intentional uh intentional network where you've got a central focus which is the regenerative food production mm. so it's not like it's just let's just talk about everything and anything you can but it's it's just got that sort of central hinging on regenerative agriculture 
And there's something really quite inspiring about the whole idea of regenerative agriculture and just connecting that ecology back to the economics mm. and, and that listening and yeah, listening is so important as well. It's just, I feel there's, there's so much, so much disconnect of people talking and people listening, but the, the ones that are being listened to are not necessarily the ones that are closest to someone's food production or someone's real, you know, the potential for really good positive connections. They're listening to someone in some other country say something because it is entertaining. They're spending a lot of listening energy, a lot of, a lot of attention on other stuff. And then they start talking and, but they're not listening. <laughs> so there's a lot of talking to people who need to be listened to and a lot of listening to people who don't need another million people listening to them. <laughs> yeah. <You> know, like, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, negativity being spread through that right now. A lot of fear. Mm. So trust. Mm. Trust to, to just listen to someone who might not be... Um, I don't know, you don't know them very well or you, they might think of things a little bit different to you. Just trusting and being able to listen and take something on board because you might mm. learn something from it. You mm. might develop some sort of connection and also trusting to talk what you really think. Yeah. Not what someone told you, but how you really feel mm. about a situation. And that, that can be expressing some of these fears. There's a lot of fears with everything that's going on at the moment, you know, mm. COVID and different things that are happening is uh, just, you know, some people's economic situations and it's so powerful to be able to talk in a trusting way. And be heard. And be heard. And sometimes that's not available in the home. And so connecting with others who have that capacity and, and similar sort of experiences and are willing to listen is just so powerful mm. once you find that outlet for what you have to say and it's listened to. And then you find someone who has a very similar sort of set of experiences or they have a really complementary set of experiences and a, and a want to offer something and they're talking and you listen to them and the power that can be realized through that process, that connection, is just, it's limitless. Mm. Mm. I like the sound of that, limitless. All right, Dan. Yeah. Well, one more thing I'd like to touch on is the, we, we Dan and I just recently started a, a bit of a <clears throat> series that we're calling uh, Dan and Jono to the facts, which is Thank you. The, 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 the frequently asked questions. I, I say to the facts because it, it just, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> FAQs, to the FAQs. Um, and so we are taking questions that we find uh, frequently asked through either the Living Systems Network or just out in the community. And we're also taking, um, we would love to hear your thoughts on those questions that you would like to hear. We've had one episode recorded and put up um, that was really, really powerful. I found it really powerful. Um, but it's just where Dan and I just literally go over some questions and, and give our thoughts. There's not answers like the truth, but more of a more of a inquiry. You know, we just inquire into these questions and um, it's just another level of us you know, contributing and, and, and this is our self-expression. Um, it's, yeah, we felt, we found it really, really powerful and it's really, really exciting. So if you want to, uh, contribute to that, to Dan and Jono's true, the facts, uh, check some questions in the comments, uh, or even send us, uh, a message where, whether that's not on any platform, you guys will find us, uh, or just join the living systems community and do it there um but yeah just having a, a regular conversation how how regular are we going to do these dan I think what do you once a week. yeah 
there's enough well, questions going on. As, as as long as there's demand, as long as there's questions being asked, we'll true the we'll true the facts. <laughs> and you know, um, we talked about expanding it and changing it. And I really liked your idea of bringing the person in who asked the question if they wish to participate yeah. in that conversation. And um, yeah, so that's also an option. You don't have to, but if you want to ask a question live and contribute to the conversation and the chewing of the facts, <laughs> go ahead. We would love to do that with you. Chewing of the fuck yous. <laughs> <laughs> The FAQs. <laughs> the fuck yous. I never thought of that. <laughs> oh, man. Maturity <laughs> level is... Okay. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, hey, Dan, thanks so much for your time this morning, man. It's um, It's been a pleasure as always. And uh, if people want to get in contact with you, how do they do that, man? Um, go to reconag.nz or living systems. I'm always checking living systems.nz. So mm. that's a great place to ask a question. Thank awesome. you very much, Jono. No, thank you. And thank you for that sweet intro. It's the first musical intro we've ever done. And, you know, being Pink Floyd, as I sip out of my Pink Floyd cup. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's do an outro. Okay. Thanks, Dan. All right.